There's something exciting about an anthology series. Instead of going into a TV show because you've liked the trailers or you've read the source material, you never know what you're going to get in an anthology. You'll get settled into one world, character's style and story, and then get pulled out and thrown into a brand new one. People rarely go out of their way to seek out short films, but anthologies are there to support and uplift each other. The best of these are in animation. I love stuff like Black Mirror and Electric dreams, but animation has the benefit of being visually distinct as well, with anime being at the forefront of that. Anime is almost entirely hand-drawn, and while there are trends in character design, it's also an industry where you can create something distinctive and still be successful. I've never once thought, ugh, all popular anime look the same because they don't. Even shows created at the same studios can leave a different kind of impression. Attack on Titan is nothing like Awesome Ranking, for instance. And so that's the feeling anime anthologies are capitalizing on. The joys of inconsistency. This isn't to say that all short films within an anthology are all that great though. Much like an album, there's got to be at least one that doesn't really leave much of an impression. But for me, that's also part of the fun. The films of Star Wars Visions aren't made equally. There are some standout ones, and there's some that aren't all that. And we'll each disagree on which are which. But I never dislike any two for the same reason, and I never like any two for the same reason either. This entire video could be about Star Wars Visions alone because the production of each quote vision is so interesting and unique. 3D CG studio Kamikaze Dorga's The Duel is a step forward for the team. They previously created Batman Ninja, but this time they've attempted to give the whole thing an inky black and white impression, capturing the feeling of both Kurosawa and 2D animation. It felt like it didn't need to be a Star Wars thing at all, but hell, Disney's paying for it, why not try something new? But on the other hand, Hiroyuki Imaishi and Studio Trigger's The Twins feels like it could have only been a Star Wars short. Get all of the biggest fans together and piece together something that pays homage to the most popular science fiction saga. It is everything you'd expect from the premiere team, but who doesn't want more premiere? Producer Kanako Shirazaki mentions that all of these creators are Star Wars fans, but what's clear is that they each had their own ways of expressing this. The relationship between Japanese anime creators and Western corporations has rarely been this creatively interesting. Each vision sort starts by crediting the animation studio, and during press interviews, the producers at Lucasfilm, and especially those at the Cubic Pictures production company, have passed on all credit to the individual creators, something that US animation is still remarkably poor at. In the past, producers have usually reached out to the largest and most established anime studios. And it's often been to create something that already feels pretty western. Production IG, Madhouse, Studio 4C. But Visions involves Kinema Citra, Science Saru, Studio Colorido, Genos Studio, teams that have been creating incredible works, but you kind of need to have a finger on the pulse to realise it. And personally speaking, it was these smaller studios that created my favourite shorts. Yuki Igarashi works at Geno to create a short film filled with incredible animation and striking designs. Abel Gongora usually works as Science Saru's Flash animation chief, but now directs an adorable Astro Boy inspired short film. Meanwhile, Maiden Abyss's assistant director takes the reins with a mesmerizing setting and intriguing characters set to Emmy Evans and Kevin Penkin's soundtrack. Regardless of whether they were famous anime directors or not, Lucas Films let these creators play to their strengths. What was important is that Visions had producers that understood the appeal of anime, and they specifically didn't want to just treat them as outsourcing partners, but instead chose the anthology format as a way of empowering their creativity. This was a similar approach taken by the Wachowskis back in the early 2000s for the Animatrix. Both Lana and Lily are huge anime fans, and so, along with Michael Arias, wanted to let anime directors develop their own ideas. They did have suggestions and requests, 
tests since The Matrix was still a developing story, but largely let them do it themselves. The Animatrix was originally going to be a TV series, and even Star Wars producers hadn't settled on the anthology format at first, but I feel this was always for the best. On social media there were plenty of people arguing over which Star Wars Vision shorts would make the best full length TV show, but I feel that's missing the point. These are meant to be ephemeral, or they're no longer special. They don't have to rely on plot twists or big reveals to get people hooked. In general, it kind of doesn't matter if anthologies are popular or not. They're not hoping for second seasons or spin-offs, they just exist and always will, as enclosed, complete short stories. But of course, that makes them difficult to greenlight. Most anthologies these days are attached to major franchises. Not really as a way of selling anything, but just to get people to engage further with a popular property. The Animatrix and Star Wars Visions are kind of unique in the respect that they didn't just let the animation teams create new visuals, but also let them come up with their own characters and stories. In the cases of stuff like Pokemon, as well as US properties like Halo and Batman, they've been a lot more concerned about preserving the canon of the original stories. But that doesn't mean that there's not a level of creative freedom allowed here. Instead, it's just now about applying that creative approach to a supplied storyline. While the world of Halo was a bit of a learning curve for the animation teams, Pokemon and Batman are already very familiar. In the case of Pokemon, each of the short films in the Generations and Evolutions collections are overseen by the main Pokemon animation producer Hiroyuki Kato, as well as a bunch of people from the Pokemon Company and Game Freak. But from there, as long as the characters and Pokemon are recognisable, talented animators and directors have been able to put their own twist on it. Back with Generations, we saw Attack on Titan and action director Arifumi Amai direct a short film about Team Aqua, while Jujutsu Kaisen director Sung Ho Park took one about Team Plasma. Even if they're not in charge of the story, they end up being in charge of how these stories are told, and that's still an important role. The latest Pokemon Evolutions episodes have been a bit more conventional so far, but still distinctive, changing up character designers for each episode to keep the visuals fresh. And even while working with billion dollar franchises, there's still room for new ideas. Director Shoujo Nishimi has a unique style, and his part in Batman Gotham Knight, not to be confused with the video game Batman Gotham Knights, is such a fun watch, and nothing like any Batman animation we've seen before. Similarly, Halo Legends is the duel was trying out something new for Production IG's CG team, using a watercolour effect over 3D animation. I don't think it particularly works, but it stands out. Experimentation is at the core of creating an anthology. TV animation schedules are hellish, and they've only been getting worse, and so the best place to experiment with new styles is within anthologies. With little creative restriction and more time to realise their ideas, it's the best place to get an idea of what these teams are truly capable of. The first anime anthology I ever saw was Short Piece. It included four films, one of which being what at the time seemed to be the last anime film from Katsuhiro Otomo. And what struck me the most is that none of them looked at all like the TV animation I'd been watching. This was a place for experimental creators. Shuhei Morita, Hiroaki Ando, people who didn't quite fit into the TV anime industry at the time. Time. Although technically they did both make a TV debut later on. Morita directed Tokyo Ghoul a year later, but never tried again since. There are some directors that pretty much only exist within anthologies. Koji Morimoto is eternally ahead of his time, always trying out new technologies and styles with remarkable confidence. So he's ended up being kind of a mainstay within anthologies, contributing to Robot Carnival, Memories, Animatrix, Digital Juice, Genius Party Beyond, and created the opening film for Short Piece. Not only do you get to see some of anime's best work in anthologies, but it can also sometimes be the only place you'll find anime's best creators, who aren't all that interested in the TV animation industry.
I mentioned earlier that because anthologies are finite, there's not much incentive for them to make money, but at the same time, there's also very little reason for corporations to make them. That's why most are attached to a franchise. I imagine Star Wars Visions was mainly greenlit as a way of keeping Star Wars fans subscribed to Disney Plus for a bit longer while they wait for the Boba Fett TV show. But there is still a passion for creating original anthology stories, and you can probably get that impression from watching Star Wars Visions. Most of these didn't need to be about Star Wars, they were just good stories in themselves, and I'd imagine that at least some of these used to be original stories that were adapted into Star Wars. Similarly, back in 2016, Koji Morimoto supervised a series called 18 If. It was meant to be a promotional thing for a mobile game that nobody cares about anymore, but instead, the team turned it into a pseudo-anthology, where the characters travel between dreams, each conceived by a different creative team. Morimoto himself tackled episode 10, an ambitious ethereal adventure with loose animation and profound backgrounds, telling the story of a sick teenager that hasn't been able to do anything by having her do everything. A lot of people didn't like this episode, but I thought it was stunning. But what struck me the most was episode 7. I love it to death, and I haven't stopped thinking about it for the last 5 years. It's 3D animation, but it was unlike any 3D animation I'd ever seen. The characters were designed by Rianti Hiriat, who I immediately followed on Twitter. She'd previously worked on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and most recently was the character designer for Ninjala. I am addicted to her art style, and I'm glad I watched 18F, just for this one episode. I had the same feeling about episode 18 of Space Dandy, yet another pseudo-anthology series. Like 18 If, it has a very open premise that can allow pretty much anything to happen. In this case, Kiyotaka Oshiyama directed, wrote, and animated an episode where Dandy's trying to catch a giant fish. Until then, we didn't know what kind of director Oshiyama would be, but the result was so beautiful and unique that when it was announced that he would be directing his own show, Flip Flappers, we knew it would be something special. And that's anthologies. They're a place for creativity, experimentation, and giving viewers the chance to discover new artists. Not everyone's going to appreciate them in the same way, and pretty much every anthology gets referred to as a mixed bag. But as I mentioned before, that's the point. The nature of creative freedom is that you're not always going to get what you want, but what's there is always going to be special. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect, but before I go, I'd like to thank these incredible people for supporting the channel. In particular, I'd like to thank Austin Hardwick, Dead Meat, Eddie Lehecker, Edwin Shale, Faux Wizard, Frizzy Canadian, Frog Kun, Fuji, Jacob Bosley, JR Pictures, My Own Mother, Naylor Drink, Nolan Soga, Quentin Elkin Smith, Ryan Taylor, and Tom Araman.